Hi everyone, this is Selena Gomez and for Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to invite Dan Gillison to chat with me about the things we're experiencing during this global pandemic. Dan is the CEO of NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, which is the largest grassroots mental health organization in the United States. So we're actually gonna get a chance to chat um, about the important work that you do. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for, thanks for having us. And uh, on behalf of uh, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, we really do appreciate the opportunity to talk with you and uh, uh, have this conversation as we really think about what's going on right now with COVID and the serious impact that it's having uh, from anxiety uh, to mood disorders. We're, we're, we're seeing quite a bit uh, taking place with uh, adults and children. Well, the impact is, is, is pretty significant. So our helpline has seen about a but 40% increase in, in- Wow. I'm gonna just ask you a few questions just so that, you know, I know it's super important to my community and, and I wanna educate people as much as possible. It's important for everyone to commit to this social distancing, but um, I've been concerned for people who are struggling, you know, mentally during this time, like what sort of um, impacts of isolation and social distancing, how is that affecting people right now? The isolation is, is um, absolutely affecting people and uh, impacting their levels of engagement, their levels of depression. The uncertainty uh, uh, actually adds to that isolation. What if? Uh, why can't? Uh, when? We're also seeing the ways that people can manage it from the standpoint of giving to others, reaching out to, to friends. You know, sometimes we, we, we think that we might be bothering someone. Yeah. And you're really not. So picking up the, the phone and reaching out to someone, someone you may not have connected with in a long time, or even reaching out to an organization that could use help and offering your help. So almost getting out of your, your, your own lane and mm -hmm. trying to get in someone else's lane and help them sometimes is really helping yourself. No, definitely. I would agree. And I, I kind of am seeing how it's affecting my six-year-old sister even, you know, she's so full of life and, and so fun. And you can tell just around this time, I just see this dip of energy and, and joy and happiness from her. And it really, you know, it, it breaks my heart. She's still a kid. She's, you know, trying to understand what's going on, but you can see that you know, even just me coming over or, you know, just like watching something different or cooking or doing something different um, definitely has helped, you know, my little sister even and us just bonding as a family, even FaceTiming, um, like I said for myself, my, my therapist has helped me big time. And I have my grandparents, luckily, during this time, we just try to do things because once I have that thought, or once I'm going down this road, I try to do exactly what you're saying, which is, how can I get out of that thought? How can I have a relationship with that emotion and just say, okay, I felt it. You know, let's go back to maybe breathing. Let's go back to seeing where our environment is, even if it's just a second of grounding yourself. How can we avoid some of the problems that are associated with isolation? Um, what can we do to keep ourselves in a positive place mentally? Recognizing the, that, that by staying at home, you are helping others. So it's yeah. first acknowledgement, recognition, and being okay with that. It can be hard because of social media and, you know, the internet, seeing people actually not staying home. It's hard. These people may not be understanding how important this is or not caring as much. And it's good to, to be reminded why it's important to stay in. So I'm glad that we touched that subject because I think that a lot of people need to be reminded. Okay, so next question is, what are some early signs that should signal a need to reach out for help? Like what should my community look out for? First thing is sleep. Criticality of sleep is, is number one. It's number yeah. one, number two, number three, and number four. When your sleep pattern is, is broken and your length of sleep, uh, if you're not sleeping six to eight hours a night, then that's the first indicator. If you do certain things on a cadence, and your cadence is all of a sudden off. You, you, you've come out of cadence and you don't understand why you've come out of cadence and you can't describe to yourself why you've come out of cadence, but you know that it's different. That's right. another indicator. And both of those are strong indicators that it, it may be uh, an opportunity for you to reach out to someone. I, I would agree with that. I've noticed that when I do get 
enough sleep. Sometimes it's even later when I sleep in, but I appreciate it more every time because I, I've actually, and I, I'm sure you may know about this. I've been reading about it, how it's, uh, I believe it's called collective dreaming. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's tons of people who are experiencing bad dreams or, um, you know, some sort of wild dreams that stick with them. And it can sometimes affect my sleep. So I've noticed that if I don't get enough or I've had a dream that throws me off, it'll throw my whole day off. You know, I, I, I try to, again, I'm so grateful to just have someone around, but I, uh, I'll be stuck in my head and I know that's exactly what it is. And, you know, I, I sometimes can't do it. You know, sometimes it's just, that's my day and I have to at least give myself some sort of grace and say, okay, maybe it just, maybe I need a new day. Um, and yeah, I know that that can be crucial. I also know that if my papa doesn't get enough sleep, it is not a fun situation to be around. So, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. so next question is, what uh, resources are out there for people who are struggling but can't get the help they normally receive? This is a big one. If a person feels that they're in a crisis, uh, we recommend they, that they reach out to the crisis text line, and that's uh, they text NAMI to 741 741. You mentioned it already, teletherapy. We know that there are, there are folks that are leveraging it and using it. There's others that have not reached out thinking that it's not available because mm. they got the notification that their medical professional's office was closed. So the next uh, part of that is, however, we're offering this call to check uh, to see if, uh, your, uh, if, if, if your organization or your medical practice is offering uh, teletherapy. Tele, uh, Oh, that's, uh, I actually didn't know that. So that's good to know. Okay. Um, so the next question is, are there specific signs that show up in children that parents and caregivers can look out for? That's actually what I was talking about with my sister. So you can look for regression, regression in behavior, regression in uh, things that they used to do, something they may have been capable of doing when they were going to school or they were actually going to daycare, whatever that it seems like. It, it looks like they've moved a step back, Selena. A look uh, for um, solitude or isolation that, that seems different, uh, that is not normal behavior for that particular child. Something that actually has them pulling away uh, versus coming around. It's not just them observing us, but it's us being open and, and saying, how are you feeling? Let's talk. And they're vulnerable. Make sure you're being honest. Uh, right. They'll, they'll know if you're not. And remember, association is assimilation. They've lost all of their, mm -hmm. uh, many of them were about to graduate from high school. Many of them may have been on their soccer teams or their lacrosse teams and didn't get to finish their seasons. Uh, many of them didn't go to get to go to their prom. Many of them are trying to be resilient for us, for the, yeah. for the moms and the dads and the, the aunts and uncles and the grandparents. So, okay, I think this is one of my last questions. Um, people openly talk about seeing their doctors for checkups or in, if they're physically in pain, but there's still a stigma around talking about mental health and seeking therapy. How is NAMI working to normalize the conversation around seeking help with mental health and what more could we be doing? First of all, it takes conversations like this and it takes people like yourself. We need uh, more uh, leaders like yourself. This is about leadership. Having these kinds of conversations as well as providing tools, resources, and communities uh, where uh, individuals can, can go. We're trying to raise the bar. Uh, we want to reduce any stigma, any shame, uh, and say, you know what? You can live successfully with a mental illness. And most young people don't call it a mental illness. They will go to an employer and say, I have a mental condition. More important than just that, it's the adaptation of the conversation and saying, it's okay. You're right. not a, our helpline is staffed by uh, volunteers, all that have lived experience. So mm -hmm. they have lived experience. So they understand what stigma is. So what we're trying to do is, first of all, we also say there is no physical health without mental health. Is we're convening as many of the leaders in the mental health space together as possible and trying to have one voice and getting America to uh, reinvest in the conversation about, uh, about health. As we come out of 
this uh, COVID-19, we want to address this fragmented mental health system and make sure that we recognize what the trauma is going to look like for all of these Americans that have been impacted by COVID. Uh, May is Mental Health Month. We're doing a, a number of different things in, in terms of this month to address, to try and reduce the stigma and address right. it head on. I know that that's a big question. I get asked a lot is, is just like not sure if they can talk about it or, you know, some of my fans saying they feel like they'll be made fun of or just not even understanding it. And I also, you know, see a lot of parents and maybe grandparents that also don't understand it as well. So I, I think it's so important to have, you know, places like this. Sometimes this is what the internet is supposed to be for. If you can't really find it right there, maybe go to these places because the world is so big and there's so many people in it. And like you said, we're not alone. This has been a really important time to talk about it so that when we come out of this, there might be more of, of that happening and maybe we'll be better prepared for it and more open. I mean, is there a, obviously a place where people can maybe join a community? Yes, and, okay. yes. Uh, we, 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 uh, we have a way for them to join and to actually find those resources and uh, they can actually uh, go to nami.org backslash find support backslash find support, and they can find over 600 uh, potential communities out across the United States um, that uh, they could uh, reach out to um, that would uh, welcome them. And we have uh, different kinds of online sessions that they could potentially join. That's incredible. I mm -hmm. love that. All of this has been so great. So I want to say thank you so much for joining me and for all the great insights. I know that this is super important to everybody at Rare Beauty and our community. So you know, it's, you're going to reach a lot of people by talking to us. So thank you so much. Um, and this was, this was great for me. I feel better talking to you. Selena, thank you so very much. Thank you to you and to Rare Beauty and uh, for your vision, your leadership and, and stepping into this and, and stepping out to help us. So we really do appreciate it more than you could ever know. And, you know, we definitely should end on like a great moment of gratitude. Um, you know, I think that it's been important to also have a moment uh, where I can just be grateful for a waking up for breathing for having, you know, my grandparents with me. And so uh, even just this, I'm so grateful for this. And I just think that, you know, when people watch this and they're watching it, I think that it's important to recognize that this is serious stuff, but we are going to get through it. There's places to be and places to go and, um, and I'm just excited. So I want to just take a moment and say thanks for everyone that was watching. Um, and you can, you can go to all the websites again that you've mentioned. So that would be, um, nami.org for information, correct? Um, yes. and there's a ton of other ones that you said. Um, but please, while you're doing this, take care of each other. Um, know that we're all in this together and, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching us.